Welcome, everybody. I thought I'd talk with you today about praying, and uh, we're using the Explore the Bible curriculum. This is session number 12. Uh, the title is Praying, and it's based on 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, all the way through chapter 3, verse 5. So before we jump in, let's go to the Lord and just pray and ask Him to open our hearts. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to thank you for the scriptures. We want to thank you for all the teachings that you've given us through uh, the Apostle Paul and, and many, many other uh, writers in the scripture. We thank you for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And help us to understand that we can come to you anytime, in any situation, in prayer, we can seek your guidance, we can seek your help, we can seek uh, deliverance, we can seek whatever it is that we may need, and we can just simply come and praise you and thank you at any time. Help us to take advantage of our privileges uh, to be able to pray. Help us to come to you knowing that you hear us, that you care, and that you will respond. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'm going to read something from uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, verses 3, uh, I'm sorry, verse 13, all the way through 3, chapter 3, verse 5. I'm just going to read the passage and then just make a few comments before we start, and then we'll go back and go through it a little more slowly. But we ought to thank God always for you, brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord, because from the beginning... God has chosen you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and through belief in the truth. Now, there's an awful lot in that statement. You know, before the foundation of the world, God knew those who would receive Jesus Christ. Uh, he also knew those who would reject him. And the Holy Spirit will begin a work in the lives of those who receive Christ by faith, and that's called sanctification. He'll progressively conform you to the image of Christ. Uh, we'll become like Christ. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, John assures us that we will see Jesus as he is when he returns, and we will be like him. Uh, becoming like him is a work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So I'm looking, I'm thankful for that, that, that God will finish the work that he's begun in our lives. Well, in verse 14, he called you to this through our gospel so that you might obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we will receive glory uh, in a way that uh, uh, it's an eternal glory that comes from God himself. Um, we, we know that those who believe in Jesus as Lord will ultimately be glorified. Uh, Jesus prays for believers to be glorified, so there's some measure of glory that we'll uh, live with in, in eternity. And in verse 15, So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold to the traditions you were taught. You know, remember the truth that the Apostle Paul and, and uh, the Gospel writers have given us, remember the truth and, and hold to it. Uh, and Paul says here, whether uh, by what we said or what we wrote, I would love to have heard Paul teaching live and in person. We do have his writings. We know these writings in Scripture, the, the New Testament letters that Paul gave us, are and he was inspired by the Holy Spirit of God as he wrote these things for us. And God wants us to study these and to know, and we can trust in the scriptures. Well, in verse 16, um, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us eternal encouragement and good hope by grace, um, we know that God the Father and God the Son um, are for us, and we could be eternally encouraged knowing 
that God loves us, God the, God the Father loves us, God the Son loves us, God the Holy Spirit is working to sanctify us and change us. He loves us. So <laughs> this is going to be accomplished. Uh, we will uh, be glorified as uh, as God tells us here in his word, and we should be eternally encouraged knowing that one day we'll be glorious beings in that eternal kingdom. Well, uh, our hearts in verse 17, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good work and word. You know, while we're here, we should be engaged in good works, uh, those kinds of works that would be pleasing to God and lead others to Christ. Uh, in addition, in verse this is chapter 3, verse 1. In addition, brothers and sisters, pray for us that the word of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored just as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil people, for not all have faith. There are many people who are actively opposed to Christ Jesus. Uh, they're actively opposed to the, to the ministry of the gospel to others who don't know Christ. So uh, Paul here is, is seeking uh, prayer uh, for, uh, f- on his behalf and Silas and Timothy as well. But he's, uh, he's asking other believers to be engaged in prayer for him and for Silas and Timothy as they go out and share the gospel. And Paul knows full well that he will encounter uh, some pretty heavy resistance. Uh, it, it's going to take place through wicked and evil people. Uh, someone that doesn't have any faith in Christ will be an adversary. Uh, But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. Uh, Right there's a clear promise of protection. Uh, God protects his people from the evil one and from anything the evil one may want to throw at us. We have confidence in the Lord about you, that you're doing and will continue to do what we command That's an expression of Paul's uh, confidence in the new believers. He's actually saying, I know God will finish the work he's begun in you. I see your faith. I see the progress that's being made. The Holy Spirit's conforming you to the image of Christ. So he says, we have confidence in the Lord about you. His trust is in the Lord to conform us to the image of Christ. Well, may the Lord Direct your hearts to God's love and Christ's endurance. So um, uh, Paul's basically encouraging the believers there to remember uh, God's love and Christ's endurance and faithfulness. So there's much. That was sort of a summary of the passage. I just wanted to hit the highlights there. And now let's go back and uh, let me go over, switch some slides here a little bit. We're going to go through uh, a little more slowly this time, but that was an overview. Well, praying in 2 Thessalonians 2, 13, verses 3 through 5, what are, what are some of the things that you're praying about now? Are you praying for those around you, for, for your brothers and sisters in Christ? Uh, they may be in your immediate vicinity, or they may be halfway around the world. God uh, invites us to pray for believers everywhere, and to pray for the gospel to be carried to the unbelieving world, wherever that may be. Prayer is uh, extremely powerful. We, we've we never plumbed the full depths of prayer, the power of prayer. Uh, it's God's power. It's infinite. It's limitless. And uh, we're encouraged to call on God for great and mighty things, and uh, really about the only thing that would hinder that is our own unbelief or or maybe our uh, laziness, you know, when we don't take the time to pray. But uh, the Apostle Paul clearly believed in prayer. Jesus believed in prayer. So you and I as believers in Christ should undertake to have uh, vital prayer lives ourselves. Well, praying for others is a wonderful uh, thing to do because it'll it'll shift the focus off of ourselves and we are supposed to be others focused um, we should uh, pray for their salvation and and their needs their temporal needs their healings and provisions whatever it may be 
and uh, the prayers should be mutual. We actually gain a, a great deal by praying for each other. We, we should love each other, and uh, talking to the Father about our brothers and sisters is a wonderful thing to do. God uh, uh, develops our faithfulness as we pray for others, and uh, He hears us uh, when we make our requests known. Uh, he encourages us to come, and I don't know uh, how many blessings are available uh, through prayer, but uh, I would like to find out by asking, and uh, God has assured us that he hears us, he cares about what we're caring about, and uh, he has all power to, to move mountains if necessary to meet these needs and these prayer requests. So um, I, there's an awful lot that I don't understand about prayer, but um, what I do know is it works, and uh, God is going to uh, respond when his people pray. There's many exhortations in Scripture where God's asking us to pray. And if he didn't intend to answer those prayers, I don't believe there would be all those encouragements in Scripture to, to get us to pray. He wants us to draw near to him and love him from, from the bottom of our heart. He wants us to love, love him with everything in us. And uh, you deepen your love for Christ and your love for God the Father by praying. Uh, it's talking to him, and uh, he talks to us through Scripture, through, um, well, many means, but uh, sometimes he'll give you thoughts. Uh, you'll be meditating on Scripture, or you'll be thinking about someone, and he'll just prompt you to pray for him or prompt you to call somebody. But there's many, many things. The idea is to maintain communion with God, and we call that prayer. It's a two-way uh, conversation that can take place anytime. Uh, God is uh, always open. He's always ready to hear us pray. Well, we'll move on here a little bit. Uh, let me drop this slide. All right, one of these days I'll figure out how to work all this technology. Believers impact the lives of other believers through prayer. Now, Believers impact the lives of other believers through prayer. Now, that's a pretty strong statement, but do you believe that your prayers actually impact the lives of other believers? Uh, they do, okay? Now, I believe that. I know it to be a fact. I've seen other believers' lives impacted because of something I've prayed. I know that God answered prayers and changed things. I have a, um, a young lady who had a horrible struggle with drugs, heroin addiction, and through prayer, she has now come to faith in Christ. She's, she's changed life. It's a whole new, she's a whole new creature now. And um, I don't see a lot of uh, heroin addicts able to come off of the heroin and uh, and uh, change their lives uh, naturally, you know, just by some kind of a program or something. But uh, prayer, we're we're going to the Most High God who made her and seeking His uh, help for her. And I've seen this with my own eyes. I've seen many things like that where God's changed somebody's life through prayer. And I've also seen Him provide for other believers and protect them and uh, rescue them in times of danger. So uh, I believe prayer works. It does impact the lives of um, other believers. So um, the God is just waiting to hear us, and he will move in the lives of others. We should thank God for the salvation of others. If a person's been saved, it's because of a work of God, uh, he's been kind enough. The Father's drawn them to Christ. The Holy Spirit's uh, opened their eyes, and now they've received Christ by faith and have been born again. We should always thank God when we see someone come to faith in Christ. It's a work of God. And prayer uh, encourages others, whether they know it or not. If, if you're praying for someone, those prayers will change things in, in their circumstances. 
sometimes they can just be encouraged in their spirit. They may not see any kind of outward change in the circumstances, but they'll feel better as they face the circumstances they're in. Uh, that strength from the Holy Spirit. He doesn't always uh, change circumstances. He can, but sometimes he changes our hearts. He changes the way we face the circumstances. And uh, we just have to trust that he knows what's best. Uh, Invite other believers to pray for and with you. This is uh, uh, an exhortation just to get involved in prayer Uh, Ask others to pray for you and then uh, ask them to pray with you and uh, and get it started. Our nation is in desperate need of prayer. Uh, The the needs are immense and only true believers are going to engage in prayer. So so get get into prayer and invite others to pray with you and uh, ask them to pray for you if you're engaged in gospel ministry or uh, missions work of any kind, ask people to pray for you. I have lots of people that pray for me, and I don't uh, I don't think uh, I could function without that. I, they pray and lift me up before God, and I'm so thankful to all those who do pray for me. If you're praying for me, I thank you right now. Well, God can help believers remain faithful to him. That's a difficult challenge nowadays. There's many ways a person can get distracted from following Christ, so prayer will help us to remain faithful to him. All right, well, our uh, first verse in this uh, study today is Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. It's an encouragement to be steadfast, and I just have this one verse on this slide. Paul is saying, but we ought to thank God always for you, brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord, because from the beginning God has chosen you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and through belief in the truth. He called you to this through our gospel. This is the Apostle Paul speaking about the gospel message he's preached to the people in Thessalonica. He's seen their positive response. They've received Christ. So Paul's explaining to them what's happened. God called you to this, this new life through faith in Christ, through our gospel, so that, and here's the benefits of it, you might obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. We will obtain, (laughs) think about that, we will obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Staggering to think of that in verse 15. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold to the traditions you were taught, whether by what we said or what we wrote. Okay, now... Paul has said an awful lot right there. He's basically given a, a synopsis of God's redemptive plan. He's, he's explained that, you know, from start to finish, uh, salvation is a work of God. And he's thankful that God is working among the Thessalonians. He's seeing that they're uh, being saved and they're being sanctified. And he knows that one day they'll be glorified. And he's thankful to God about it, and he's, he's rejoicing, and, and he's also explaining to them how this works. Uh, God saves us, and uh, that's from his perspective and from ours. We believe uh, the gospel message concerning Jesus Christ, and we receive Christ by faith. So um, salvation's initiated by God. It's not really going to be initiated by man. You can look at Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verses 4 and 5 to see that. The Holy Spirit will set us apart. That's called sanctification. He'll sanctify us. Uh, he sets, up, sets us apart from sin. And uh, when, a, when a person comes to faith in Christ, you, you believe the gospel message concerning Jesus Christ 
he is God's son. He came from heaven to earth. He lived an absolutely sinless life on our behalf. He was uh, arrested and uh, brutally tortured, uh, tried, and then sentenced to die on the cross. He died on the cross. He was buried. He rose on the third day. He uh, appeared for about 40 days uh, to people who loved him and his disciples, and then he ascended to heaven. There he was coronated and crowned as the king of kings for eternity in an eternal kingdom. He intercedes for us now from heaven. Uh, Shortly after uh, he ascended to heaven, about 10 days later, he sent back the Holy Spirit. And you can see that in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came and filled the 120 believers in that upper room. Uh, The Holy Spirit has begun the process of sanctification in those believers and he, um, uh, he intercedes for us. Jesus intercedes for us in heaven. So uh, we're pretty secure. Um, uh, God will continue that work until we're safely at home with him. And um, the security that we have, because God the, God the Son is interceding for us, he's paid our penalty in full for us, He's given us the Holy Spirit who who fills us, uh, leads us, and teaches us, and intercedes for us here. Uh, God the Father is hearing these uh, uh, intercessory prayers. Well, we're secure, and um, uh, we should be able to uh, rejoice uh, no matter what we're going through. Um, I'm not saying <laughs> pain and suffering or, or heartbreaks are easy to endure, but you're the, if you look at the bigger picture, your position in eternity with Christ in His kingdom, and with with God the Fa- God as your Father and and Jesus as your Savior and King and Lord and brother, all of this is is secure through for those who are truly believers in Christ. So uh, we should just remain steadfast in our faith. Well, in uh, you know actual daily. The, our daily lives, we want to be faithful to the truth, uh, the the teaching we're receiving here from the Apostle Paul. Now, in the Thessalonians case, they were they were hearing it orally from Paul, but he also wrote them letters, and um, he wants uh, Paul's objective is that the believers are immovable in their belief; they're they're assured of the teachings of Paul. When Paul uh, speaks. As, as he's being inspired by the Holy Spirit, he's sharing uh, the truth concerning reality. He's given us absolute truth, and uh, we should take that to heart. Uh, he's telling us what's really real, what's really going to happen, what God's going to do, what will happen to us. All of these things uh, are given to us in Scripture, and it's, it's the truth. Well, fear... And uh, doubt and lies, uh, those are, uh, will cause our faith to weaken. And guess who's behind all of that? Our enemy, the devil. Satan is uh, prowling around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's still using uh, his number one tactic is lies. Uh, there's far more false teaching being promulgated than there is truth. And our objective is to know the truth that is in your Bible. The truth of God is, has been given to us in the Bible. And the Holy Spirit, he's given the Holy Spirit who will lead us into all truth. So between the Holy Spirit and the scriptures, faith in Christ will lead you right into the kingdom of heaven. Fear and doubt and lies will weaken your faith. So be careful what you believe, be careful who you listen to, be careful what you read or watch, Um, uh, be selective and uh, listen to, well, I would just recommend reading the scripture, read the scripture, read the Bible itself and let the Holy Spirit teach you. Um, uh, So we'll go with that. I'm going to uh, summarize this thing here now. Um, you and I need to be steadfast. 
Paul here was quite thankful for the Thessalonian believers. Paul knew that they were chosen by God for salvation. And Paul also knew that they were being sanctified through faith in the Lord Jesus. And uh, Paul, under, Paul understands that God completes the work that he begins. So these believers were chosen they're justified by God, they're being sanctified, and then one day they'll be glorified. And he challenged them to stand firm and hold on to the truth of the gospel. Paul, uh, Paul knew quite well that there will be liars that come into the midst, false teachers. Uh, there will be distractions and discouragements of all kind, primarily deception. False teaching has, has been a tactic of the devil for centuries it works so be careful what you believe uh, don't believe anything that contradicts scripture because the scripture is your ultimate authority uh, that's something that you must settle for yourself your scripture is life to you so think on that all right now we'll move on to the next passage here be encouraged and this is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us eternal encouragement and good hope by grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good work and word. Okay. Paul here is make he's praying to God the Father and God the Son, our I notice I love it. Let me put that verse back over there. He says, Our, may our Lord Jesus Christ Himself, and God our Father, who has loved us. You can take great hope in knowing God is our Father and Jesus is our Lord. Um uh, they just will not let us go. God the Father and God the Son will not let us go. Jesus has promised to never leave us or forsake us. Uh, you can just rest assured in that. And Paul knows it. He wants the Thessalonians to know it. I want you to know it. If your faith is in Christ, he has you. And um, he's asking, Paul is just asking God to at God the Father and God the Son, to give us um, eternal encouragement and to uh, uh, help us to realize our hope that we have in, in grace, he encourage our hearts and strengthen us, and as we go forth, uh, we can go quite confidently. All right. All of that, uh, you can see it. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who has loved us and given us eternal encouragement and good hope by grace. Encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good work and word. All right. Well, we know we're going to face troubles in this world. We're going to have trials that might shake our faith. There's things that happen and we just don't know why. And that's okay. Uh, you don't have to know why. What we do need to know is is God is faithful. God the Son is faithful. The Holy Spirit's faithful, and um, the ultimate prom they promised to uh, uh, redeem us. They they promised to take us safely into the kingdom. Those promises are sure, and uh, they've they've clarified in Scripture that we will suffer here for a, a little while, but one day. Look at Revelation 21 and 22 and look forward to the heavenly uh, city there, the New Jerusalem, and the fact that God's going to walk among us and wipe away our tears. Look to that and uh, don't, don't let the trials and sufferings that we may have here uh, interfere with your faith. We can pray to God, uh, ask him to uh, strengthen our hearts and guard our hearts and our, guard our minds. We can, when you're tempted to sin or uh, someone's coming after you, 
go to God, go to God, cry out to God in prayer and ask him to guide you in every good work and uh, uh, ask him to help you keep your motives uh, God focused. Well, Paul repeatedly prays for the people in Thessalonica. Uh, He's praying for their continued growth uh, in sanctification. He prays for them to continue to love each other and to to grow in their love for one another. And um, when you know people are praying for you to grow in the faith and to love others, it helps you. And uh, if you're praying for others, that helps you too. And it helps them. So we should all be engaged in active prayer and uh, pray for members of your own uh, family, your household, your Sunday school class, your church. Pray for people that are near and dear to you. If it's uh, believers, you know, pray and encourage, ask God to encourage them. And uh, you don't have to tell them that you're praying for them, but it doesn't hurt. Pray for them. You can pray secretly or, or with their full knowledge. Uh, but uh, God hears uh, prayers that are offered in sincerity. He hears them. Okay. Well, we'll summarize that uh, that section here. Paul has asked our Lord Jesus and our Father God to simply encourage and strengthen the Thessalonian believers. Now we'll move on to Second Thessalonians chapter three, verses one and two. The title is "Be Prayerful." Be prayerful. In addition, brothers and sisters, pray for us that the word of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored just as it was with you, and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil people, for not all have faith. Well, specifically here, Paul is asking for the spread of the gospel message. He wants this message to uh, travel the world, and he's asking God for protection for his messengers as uh, as they go out. They Paul knows very well that there's opposition when you come into a town to proclaim the gospel. And so Paul is uh, very humble. He's totally dependent upon the Lord, and he's asking others to pray for him and Silas and, and uh, uh, about the, uh, the mission that they're on. And um, we all, at this point, should, should be pray, prayerfully lifting up our missionaries, our evangelists, all Christian workers of, of any kind, if they're working in missions in the inner city and in hospices or nursing homes or hospitals, wherever they may be. But pray for believers everywhere and join in. You know, let God know you care. Let him know you're concerned about your brothers and sisters overseas or in difficult and dark places. Pray for prisoners and inmates. I mean, uh, the cancer wards, there's people everywhere that we can lift up to God in prayer, and you know some. So go to God on their behalf. You've got a precious privilege to be able to pray, and God's inviting us to, to pray. Uh, uh, we could pray for our country, uh, pray for America, pray for people to come to faith in Christ, pray for God's will to be done in our nation, Pray for this division to end and help us to be united uh, through faith in Christ. All of these things are God-sized requests, so let's ask God. Let's ask him to change things here. Who knows what he might do if we genuinely humble ourselves before him, if we turn from our wicked ways, we seek his face, we we pray diligently. Um, It's just not been done yet. So try it. Let's do it and uh, see what God does in our nation. Um, We get to carry one another's burdens. We can encourage and challenge each other to pray. Uh, Just prayerfulness, is is, it's a good habit to be in because it it deepens our relationship with God and it brings all kinds of answers. I'm going to go ahead and uh, summarize that portion. Paul is simply... Ask the Thessalonians to be prayerful. Please pray for Paul and Silas and Timothy as they share the gospel with others. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, that you pray for me. I'm involved in inner city ministry and, and other places. Uh, pray for me that I'll have opportunities to share, 
that it'll be well received and, and that I'll be protected from evil people who lack faith. I do, uh, believe you me, I, <laughs> I run into people who lack faith in Christ, and uh, it doesn't stop me from sharing the gospel with them, but uh, it, your prayers might keep me protected. <laughs> the, um, the Lord uh, wants us to be faithful and share the gospel with all people. Now, you don't have to cast your pearls before swine, but he will prepare uh, opportunities. He'll, he'll say, share with this one. And uh, th- those are, I, I ask him to guide me daily and uh, I ask him to show me who to speak with and who to share with and who to pray with. And uh, I found that he brings me people now. He brings people to me. They'll come to me and ask for prayer. Uh, they'll come and I can share the gospel with them. But but he, he brings people across my path. And he also um, allows me to encounter uh, unbelievers uh, that that are not even they're not open to the gospel, but he keeps me safe when I'm in their presence. And uh, I deal with people who don't believe uh, Christ is the Son of God. I believe I deal with people who are atheists. I deal with uh, witches. I've I've dealt with just about uh, every kind of syncretistic mix of uh, of religion that you can imagine. They they seem to combine little portions of various faiths and come up with their own plan. But I've talked to a lot of different people over the years, and uh, uh, my job is to give them the truth. And um, I do hear uh, some of the things they believe. I had a guy that believed in reincarnation on one seat, and the guy right beside him uh, was a Buddhist, and the other guy beside him was an atheist. And I just shared the gospel with all three of them. And uh, they all, we all need the gospel. So um, <laughs> I asked him, uh, I said, if what you're believing should happen to just not be true, would you like to hear the truth? And the, uh, the guy that uh, believed in reincarnation said yes. So I shared it with him. And uh, the other two heard it. <laughs> so uh, if I were to hear the gospel... Um, it's gonna. It's a very, very powerful message. It comes from God, and a, a creature will hear it, and it can't help but affect a person. Now they can harden their hearts, and they can resist and reject. But, but God wants us to go ahead and share it anyway. That's uh, my job is to sow the seeds, which is the word of God. Sow the seeds. The field. Uh, uh, there's diff- you know the parable of the sower. There's the uh, hard path. There's the, um, uh, the, the soil that has, doesn't have much depth. It's rocky soil, and there's the thorny ground, and then there's the good fertile soil. Well, I don't know which uh, person is which, so I just share it with all of them. All right. Well, we'll go here to uh, the next portion. Be confident. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 3 through 5. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. We have confidence in the Lord about you that you are doing and will continue to do what we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to God's love and Christ's endurance. Okay. Well, um... We know that uh, Paul is is he, Paul is helping the Thessalonians understand God's faithfulness. We each need to experience God's faithfulness for ourselves, and um, uh, Paul wants them to know. So he's just basically being quite plain in the Scripture. He just says, "But the Lord is faithful; He will strengthen you." He will guard you from the evil one. Now, the evil one doesn't always bring you pain or suffering. Oftentimes, he brings you false teaching. Other times, he brings you temptations to sin. And then there is sickness. He can bring sickness or uh, pain or betrayal. He can produce uh, animosity in a group of people that you're trying to speak to. He can do all kinds of things. But God is faithful in every scenario, every case. And God's divine strength and God's sustaining power 
will enable the believers to do all that he's asked of us. So if God gives you an assignment, he's going to empower you to do it, and he will clear the way. Now, it doesn't look like it sometimes, but that's beside the point. He does accomplish what he assigns us to do. He'll empower us to do so. The Lord's faithful to accomplish his purposes, and he'll accomplish his purposes in the lives of those who follow him. Sometimes you may think you're on a mission for God, and God is testing your faith. He's testing to see if you're going to be obedient, if you'll act when you're called to act. So uh, don't go by what you see. Just go by God's word. Obey him. Well, that's a lot to think about, so I'm going to uh, move this over there. There's that passage. The Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. Remember that and take it to heart. Paul says, We have confidence in the Lord about you, that you are doing and will continue to do what we command. Now, that's a Paul is uh, affirming them in their faith. And then he prays, May the Lord direct your hearts to God's love and Christ's endurance. Remember Christ's faithfulness all the way through his death on the cross. And remember God the Father's uh, love for you that in, in giving his son for you. So there's much to be confident about in God's uh, love for us and Jesus' endurance. Be confident. It is God who protects us from Satan. And uh, just continue doing the will of God. Do what God says. Remember God's love and Christ's endurance. That'll help keep you when times get hard for you. All right. A summary here of the entire lesson. Believers impact the lives of other believers through prayer. We should thank God for the salvation of others. Prayer encourages others. Um, Invite others to pray for you and to pray with you. And remember, God can help believers remain faithful to him. All right, that's a summary there. Well, Jesus himself is our ultimate model for praying for others. And all of us who believe in Christ are called in, to intercede uh, for others in the work of the kingdom. And we're equipped as well. Um, take, take your prayers to the Lord. Take these things to him in prayer and become actively engaged in the work of ministry. Well, prayer actually joins us to do God's kingdom work. Okay. Well, church leaders, missionaries, Christian workers across the globe, pray for them. Pray for me. I sincerely appreciate your prayers. And we'll close out here. I'm going to pray for you. Our Heavenly Father, I want to pray right now for everyone who's hearing me, everyone who's watched this this, uh, lesson. I pray that you will speak directly to their spirits. I pray that they'll be deeply and greatly encouraged. I pray that they'll be aware of the opportunities you've set before them. Deliver them from the evil one if they're under an attack of some kind, if they're trying to resist temptation or if they're suffering in some way. I just lift them up to you, Lord, and ask you to intervene. And I pray for you to be glorified as you work in us and through us. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Thank you for being with me. Again, pray for me, and I've got some more lessons coming up soon. Uh, See you later. God bless you. Bye-bye.